Hi, this is Marina from Dark Star Astrology bringing you the lunar eclipse on the 8th of November. It will be at 16 degrees of Taurus, Dakan 2. It will be conjunct Uranus and it will be square Saturn. So it's going to trigger that big aspects of the year, Uranus square Saturn. The fixed star is Menkar in the sea monster. The tarot card is the Six of Pentacles and the crystal we'll be looking at is the Citrine. The moon is exalted in this decan and some examples of why this is, it, I mean it's a powerful moon, um, just generally as a moon, because um, in Taurus the moon is um, exalted and in this particular decan, Carl Jung had his moon here, so did a Case. Casey, so this is a moon that is very connected to the collective unconsciousness, um, but it is close to Mentar, Menkar, which can cause problems because Cetus, the whale, is also symbolic of the communal psyche of the world as well. So there can be an over-absorption of everything else in the cosmos, seen and unseen, good and evil. So that includes material from dimensions that may have a negative agenda. So these forces can easily manipulate the moon. In other words, the general public, which the moon represents. So at this time, we can have difficulty discerning our own emotions from those around us. The sensitivity, of course, can work positively Two, where an artist picks up the audience's mood and modulates its performance to fit. Now, the tarot card associated with this decan is kind of interesting because it kind of goes with the theme later on when I look at the whole thing with Uranus and Saturn as well. So it's a card of extremes. It's about ha having, not having. So the haves and have nots. Domination and submission superiority and inferiority, generosity, meanness, supporting, not being supported, being appreciated, being used or teaching and learning, hiring or firing, the list could go on. However, one of the strong traditional meanings associated with it is charity or patronage. So after difficulties or finding yourself in a bind, usually financially, someone has stepped in to help out. So, you know, this is talking about the cost of living crisis again. Um, and Taurus is a sign very associated with the material world as well and money, of course. So the fixed star, let's look at that. So that's, Menkar is actually situated in the open jaw of the sea monster. Hungry, hungry. Um, this was the creature sent to ravage Andromeda and is considered unfortunate, corresponding to impediments of many kinds, worries and tests of endurance. But the major problem with this star seems to be trouble with inheritance and throat ailments as well. And Robson's harsh words really emphasised Menko's dark side, which is mental anxiety, hatred of the vulgar, ill will of women, loss of marriage, inheritance is attended by much evil, strong and uncontrolled passions, jealousy, immoral violence. You know, it's not a good star. So to have that with the Saturn square Uranus, which already is difficult. And really, because this, this aspect has been going on for two years, and it's the one that I call, you know, techno tyranny. And you know, that's still going on. I think they're still trying to, uh, you know, have some sort of track and trace on us. And um, it's not over, is it, with the... So, and now we're coming into to the winter season. So there's going to be more promotion of, you know, get your boosters and all that stuff. So... Now with this, with this trigger, so if we look at the chart, I mean, yeah, so it's opposite Mercury. Mercury is medicinal things as well. Um, so you've got the T-square, you've got loads going on with this eclipse. Venus and Scorpio, there's that obsessiveness to it as well. And I just think it, 
it's a difficult one because it's it's the blood red the blood red almost warmongering moon again um so i don't know what's going to happen because i don't know if it's worth me going on about too much about what it's doing to other countries um charts because it's actually not doing anything to the us chart but it is visible over the U us so and really eclipses are accounted more when they are visible over certain countries so even though it's not directly affecting the us chart by any kind of aspect um it is i mean it is widely opposed joe by well all right because the midterms are coming up so i just i know i'm i'm all over the place here i was going to look at the chart but i just wanted to mention that it is being that it's 16 degrees it, it is opposite the midpoint of joe biden's mars mercury and what i thought may come up with this eclipse i mean i know there's been the whole um hunter biden's laptop thing um i haven't been keeping up with the news but hasn't hasn't there been like some re that's been sort of brought up in the news again i i think vaguely that i've heard some things on twitter i don't know but anyway since the the eclipse is going to be opposite his mercury mars midpoint this is in his house of his and enemies um he's got he's got venus and mars and mercury and the sun all in scorpio has joe biden in the 12th house shady man um so so this eclipse is going to be in between his mars and mercury so mars rules his fifth house of children Mercury is a planet that's associated with children. I don't know. I, I wonder if if there's something that's going to be brought up so, you know, strategically because the midterms are coming up. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So that's affecting him. Um, and as for the countries, you see, the countries are, it's on the EU's midheaven and on the Russia's AC. So I think this is going to inflame further the whole um, NATO-Russian war with Ukraine, all that. Yeah, and we've got the fact that that it's Saturnian, this star, Menka, worries and tests of endurance unjustified enmities you know it's like yeah making someone an enemy when they don't really deserve it and this sea monster thing as well because you know these pipelines are under the sea so you know so that yeah so i just wonder if there's going to be more of that more of these explosions and um sabotage <laughs> sabotage whatever they're calling it now um yeah interesting so it's it's is this is going to be a difficult difficult eclipse My, I, I think the the solar eclipse is more about relationships and toxic love things and more of a personal thing but this one's way more transpersonal and way more political because of this is the collective consciousness it kind of affects everyone and just because i think that Saturn square Uranus is such a big deal for so many people because it, it it's really you know Saturn is kind of sorting the wheat from the chaff and you'll see you know wheat and uh, farmers it was my big theme really here because the moon is also trying Ceres and I think and it's a it's very tight as well um and so i think there are sort of organic solutions to this um and you see Ceres is also in, in virgo and i think if Ceres was supposed to rule any any sign it probably would be virgo although it has a lot in common with the taurus as well so i've looked at the the aspects we've got moon opposite mercury which is the 
public mood changes very swiftly as well. So it's very difficult to plan with this one. And remember, um, the eclipses don't just affect this week or, you know, it, it, it will, a lunar eclipse lasts about three months and the solar is more like six months. But I think this one is, is more like, is longer than three months, to be honest. I just think, I just think this is a very important eclipse. I think it's very interesting that it's the same day as the midterm elections in America. Um, I mean, I hope I've got that right. Or do your midterms go over a few days? I don't know. But anyway, the fact that it's happening at that time and that it is triggering Saturn square Uranus is, is a, it's big. Um, then, no, so yeah, the moon trine Ceres. The, the meaning for this one is it supports charity work. Feeding the vulnerable is interesting as well, because this is kind of making me think of food banks as well, which are big in England at the moment. Um, apparently, they're almost running out of food in the food banks now, which is sad, very sad. So, but there's also a time when the collective feels nostalgia for what seems like a golden past, you know. The times before people were scared about uh, common cold and flu and things uh so yeah ancient times and traditional values are glorified antiques are more appealing as well then the wisdom of older people is respected and honored well i hope so you know being that i am a kind of older person because i'm over i don't know why i'm talking in this weird voice it's my my farmer voice um being that i'm over the age of the 50 so i think that makes me old and wise, I hope so. Anyway, so um, affirm your ancestral connections and make strawberry jam with granny. Yes. Okay. So those are all the aspects. And um, but the Saturn square Uranus, you know, this aspect is now waning. But I think you know when you have a waning aspect like this that has been so important, it's kind of a bit of a death throes of whatever nasty demons this square has summoned up in the collective and the collective is really important at the moment because of Menkar. So um, it started in February 2021 and wasn't that also the time, yeah, that the, the program for upgrade for make, making the Cybermen, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if this offends some people but I just, anyway, okay. Those medical upgrades were, they were happening then, you know, I mean, I remember they were really stepping up. Anyway, so it can be tyrannical, humanitarian and quite communistic because, you know, Aquarius is, Saturn Aquarius is big on equality and very utopian as well, while Uranus in Taurus is a kind of radical farmer. So this is now that I'm thinking of the the whole Dutch farmers protest because that's been ongoing and it hasn't been in the news much. And you know, another development with with Saturn square Uranus is AI, the merging of organic humans, Saturn with technology, these interesting cyber upgrades that mess with your your DNA. There you go. So, but then also I thought Uranus in Taurus could be the rise in cryptocurrencies and um, which, you know, it could bring an economic crash with the square, which causes a revolution. And then there is talk of, are they going to bring back the gold standard, which would be Saturn the old way. So it's a kind of fight between the crypto digital currencies and, uh, you know, gold isn't it the gold standard then for i don't know if this is actually that relevant now because when i wrote this the queen had just died but you know now it's like kind of old old news now but radical farmer i was thinking you know king charles the third his son's at 22 scorpio actually so is biden's his Mer yeah biden's mercury is at 21 scorpio which is conjunct Prince Charles's son and his Venus is at 20 Scorpio. They've got a lot of co in, com in common, 
so yeah, so the lead is funny, yeah. So the leader of because I really don't call Liz Truss, our Prime Minister leader, she'll be gone in a couple of months anyway. So the only stable uh, leader of our country is really Prince Charles. And um, you've got Biden still in the UK, in the US for a while. So it's funny that they are both being, they're being affected by this eclipse, really. I'm thinking, you know, all their, like, all the agendas that they're going to be promoting are, you know, this is the green issue and this whole thing about are you going to be, are they going to try and introduce some sort of tracing, track and trace thing, what you spend your money on, is it going to, is, is your shopping green enough, will you earn like tokens for uh, your sustainability in the week, I mean the thing is I'm quite sustainable, I mean I do all the recycling and I only eat organic, Prince Charles should give me some tokens for that, I buy some of his stuff, the you know the Ducci brand or whatever, so uh, Duchy of Cornwall that he has, uh, but then you see there's there's this thing about the Dutch farmers and um, they've been protesting because their their government plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, which means ten thousand farms will have to choose or will have to close, sorry, um, or become green farms. Green farms. What, what does that even mean? So from what I can gather, synthetic, synthetic pesticides are part of the problem and farmers will have to wait two years to qualify for organic status, but who can afford to do that? But, you know, I would love to see more organic farms. That's the thing, I would. So, but, but I think, but I have a sneaky feeling it wouldn't be about that. It would be, oh, you've got too many cows, your meat, your meat, the meat is the thing. Um, and they fart too much, so that's greenhouse gases and and the manure. I don't know. I don't know enough about that, but but it, it seems like it's moving that way. That um, that the, the green thing is going to be used in that way, which is really annoying because if you say anything against it, then you're seen as a dirty polluter. When uh, so many, so much of the rest of the world is really really polluting and then what's the point if people are gonna uh, the west is gonna open factories in china where they don't have to abide by these green rules it's just i've said this before it's just so it's so hypocritical anyway so what's the best way to use this eclipse really i mean it is very sensuous it's very empathic be great to have a massage during this time probably need it to calm down because of all the stress Self-care is important. Acupuncture would be really beneficial as well um, because mercury, the mercury influence supports healing hands, green fingers. Um, it's very maternal and material while the moon here adds even more nurturing. So we are generous with our children and those we care for. So, you know, it's like, again, I'm just thinking of Biden and his son. Um again that's looking at the collective i mean i know it's like well, who cares about biden but the thing is i mean like i said i'm reading this mundane astrology book and heads of nations do they are a symbol of the nation of as a whole and uh and i know it's awful because liz trust does not speak for me you know in in the uk but the collective um the collective is 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 just is quite sick at the moment you know and only i mean this has always been the case oh, if only i remembered the there's a there's a phrase i don't know whether i've right i found my quote yeah i, I put it on twitter and it's from carl jung and it says masses are always breeding grounds of psychic epidemics so this is the whole for mass formation psychosis thing so um this was part of the mundane astrology thing that's why when you do charts for mundane astrology they're always really negative because you just get that mob rule and it's only when you know like uh, if you say get a for example like the european union chart is awful it's just 
really terrible. It's for a, a collective of people and it's so bad because for some reason when 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 people are in groups they they conform and they do, and they they go into kind of sh i don't know sheep sheep mentality so a chart for a mass of people if it's really difficult and challenging it will just d um devolve to the lowest vibration whereas if you're an individual and you get this difficult chart you're more likely to make a success of it if you work on yourself so so yeah the the mob rule um potential of the the collective is 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 bad it's it's strange isn't it so um so that's why when you look at fixed stars the reason they are they tend to be quite negative is because the fixed stars were developed in a time where we looked more at mundane astrology and charts of na nations and yeah the, the the bigger picture so the thing with personal astrology is that it's more it's it's a different ball game uh, i don't know if that makes sense but anyway um the point is yeah this kind of mass psychosis thing potential is in the collective is always there um because unfortunately you know when you look at the world as a whole you know, there's pretty nasty things going on all over. We forget the whole world isn't, hasn't got the luxury of what the West has. But the thing is, now the West's sort of degenerating. So then, what the hell? So yes, back to this. The lunar eclipse supports those host dinners where people feel loved and well fed. And this eclipse gives those who are plugged into it great business sense and attracts pentacles like bees to honey. So... If you've got that kind of business nose, there are all people that will be doing well from this uh, eclipse. So, uh, you know, I just think it's it's going to really it can either be it's going to be really really bad for some people and really really good for other people. I think that's the same really with all eclipses that they're, they're always very um, extreme in their in their manifestations. So, you know, it's negative aspects can be transcended. I always say that, but probably only by the more evolved souls. The wealth that is promised must not be used selfishly as well. And, you know, many aspects of this are about caretaking, tradition and nutrition. And people will probably have to learn things. I mean, the preppers are going to be laughing, so they'll be fine. Um, so... I mean, some people don't even know how to cook. Um, so learning to cook and how, you know, how learning to cook from scratch, how to live frugally, you know, people have not needed to learn. They just haven't even needed to think about that. But now they are. So, you know, I think this is going to toughen people up because people have been spoiled. They really have. Myself included. I haven't turned the heating on yet. And here I am sitting in, I mean, it's probably quite a mild night, but I think I've grown accustomed to it already. And usually, and I know it's only two weeks into October. <laughs> Maybe I won't be saying this in uh, November and December when it in December when it's minus five outside. But so far, so good. You know, um, I'm just w wearing more layers. You know. By the way, new new item in my shop. It's long sleeved. I thought I'd get the long sleeve things. Um, I always get oh, this is like a large, but I like large ones. Anyway, that's it. Gemini, because I'm Gemini rising. Um, there's probably a link down below somewhere. Shill, shill. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so get back to this. Uh, now, the thing about this moon, it's very sensitive as well, because it's got the empathy too. So it will benefit those who are artistic and empathic, and they will know how to make beautiful objects with just about anything. Sculptures from recycled objects will do well, and food art because it's really, I mean, this is really the eclipse for for cake decorators. They'll do really well. Christmas dinner tables will be stunning this year, even if they have no money, because, you know, it's all about imagination. You don't have to have, you can use found objects, you know, and uh, yeah, I'm just thinking of, you know, the war times when people were rationed and they looked actually healthier, didn't they? When you see pictures of people during the war, 
hardly anyone obese. You know, they're all very slim because of rations. And but I mean, bananas was a luxury. My mum says, I remember when we had our first banana and uh, and uh, and you know, chocolate as well. So there you go. So anyway, that is it really. I did a bit more of the astrology this time because there wasn't really much to say. I mean, I think I've dropped in some political, astro-political stuff, haven't I? I mean, you know, I haven't been keeping up with the news because it's just, it's just depressing. And um, it, it just, to me, it just feels like they're just bringing up more and more fear, fear, fear. Let's have a look on Twitter. Is there anything, what's the latest I mean, again, this is going to be out of date by the time. But all I can see... Okay, what's happening? <laughs> well, this is English-based, but... Trending myocarditis, Waitrose. Uh, the best thing you can do to quash a deadly COVID-19 surge this winter. <laughs> Telegraph film. Uh, Emma McKay. No one could have prepared me for how much English people drink. Well, they might not be able to afford it anymore. But, um, yeah, I thought I saw, let's see, is there anything else? I thought there was some other, a new variant which was scaring everyone. Uh, <laughs> I can't even say what that word is for 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 trending. P, P, um, and yeah, it begins. It's it's a silent P, so it's the P's. One that is uh, not a, a silent P, and the other one is a an infusion that's trending too. So I know lots of things are coming out about that. By the way, so let's let's get back to the crystal. Get back to the crystal. Okay, here's my citrine from my bathroom. Yeah citrine um so perfect perfect crystal for comforting us in the cold weather months i'm sorry i know australia you're having a lovely summer and i'm jealous but yeah in in the in the wind we you know it's winter up here up north so it's bright yellow color looks just like a crystallized sun it is said that sunshine can brighten the darkest of moods and so it is with this cheerful crystal as the cold nights draw in the crystals guaranteed to keep you glowing the stone is known as the light maker and associated with success and abundance so crystal vaults say that uh, citrine is an excellent crystal for interpersonal relationships it soothes family or group problems and promotes solutions and cohesiveness you know, again, because this um, this eclipse will be going on over the Christmas season, its effects will be then. So, you know, some families don't have the greatest, um, they don't have the greatest relationships with each other. So hopefully this will bring a bit of, you know, warmth and, you know, understanding. Um, so families are going to have to pull together. You know, if some of them are cold and don't have enough money to heat themselves, you know. So hopefully, you know, adversity brings people together as well. Um, carrying a citrine attracts love and happiness, guards against those who would break your heart. It's a effective shield against spite and jealousy. So, yeah, I think it goes well with a Taurus eclipse because opposite the eclipse is, is Scorpio. And we know Scorpio is a bit of a jealous one. So due to its warm solar energy, citrine is excellent at overcoming depression, fears and phobias. You know, fears is a big thing with the whole um, square from Saturn as well, because Saturn is fear too. Those with low self-esteem can benefit from its comforting golden aura. Citrine, citrine is a stone of self-healing, inspiration and self-improvement. Lots of that going on um, because of sober October. I'm doing sober October too, not because I have a drinking problem, but maybe I do, um, but because of yeast and issues with that. So um, it's been quite, quite good, actually. Um, so yeah, so detoxification, that's another thing. So self-improvement and one feels more radiant holding a citrine gives optimism for the future rather than being stuck in the past. 
Most of all, I think that citrine does help resolve the contradictions of the Saturn square Uranus rather well because we want to move to the future, but the Saturn is kind of squaring it and holding us back and making us fearful of the future because at the moment, usually I'm someone that loves technology and and thinks, yeah, you know, this, you know, if it wasn't for, for technology, I, w I wouldn't have my business. You know, the technology has really helped me be and and other people as well be self-employed and break away from the rat race and be what are they called a, a digital nomad not that i nomad anywhere because i can't bloody go anywhere because i haven't had the upgrade um but i can in europe but not anywhere that i really want to go um so what was i moaning about <laughs> okay so yeah so um the technology issue the technology issue yeah it's it it should be a liberating thing but they're trying to imprison us with it as well so it's uh it that's the the conflict of this uranus saturn square we want to to do to transcend the negativities out of this and make technology great again and uh, make it work for us rather than imprisoning us um with it so, you know, there's some great, like, there's a great, like, meditation app that I found, hypnotherapy for anxiety and all these things. It's just been great. So there's so many good things you can do with it. It's just that you've got to try and not be sucked into the negativities. The whole theme of this eclipse is the Dutch farmers. So I, I think it's affecting everyone around the world, but they're not really talking about it. So we'll see. Anyway, if you want to remind yourself of everything I've been saying, it's all written down on the link below on my website. Okay, so thanks for listening and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.